school or evil people. But first, if we work for peace, we cannot truly work for peace unless we have peace in ourselves, unless we have love in ourselves. Well, then <clears throat> you can work for peace and you can be crucified if necessary it is. But you cannot suffer and work finally. And this is the solution of the modern world. Yeah, but but no, my no, no, Christian no, communism. At that point, let me go back to, to John and George. I mean, is this fair, the, the parallel that's been being drawn here between your sort of getting very involved with meditation and that somehow being very, very selfish oh, and well, not caring about the world? About selfishness. It sounds like you're going to sit down in silence all the time. You know, you do it in the morning, say, to do your day's action, whatever it is, better. But you're putting it down saying, we can't con sit down contemplating our navels while all this is going on. No, the whole point of doing it is to have more energy and more control over yourself to be able to do whatever action you've got to do. I don't think anyone would argue with that for a moment. Look, some of us, some of us saying, here yeah. are Quakers, and we've been practicing yes. what some people would call a form of meditation which has driven the Society of Friends into, into action. Now, yeah. after, last, after last week's... Uh, wonderful program. We're very impressed and people have been saying to us, there's a couple of lads there who are natural Quakers. Now, do they think they're Quakers? <laughs> well, it's all the same. It's this is the point the we've got to try and get over yeah. to people, that religion, it's only, there's only one God and they're all a branch of the same thing. And the sooner people get over this sectarianism, the better, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a Quaker, I'm a Christian, I'm a Buddhist and I'm a Hindu. Me and too. it's all the same. Well, that's what Quakers have been saying for the last 300 well, years. Yes, we yes. Yeah. the divine in all of us. Bully for the Quakers. <laughs> but I want to come back on this thing of action. It's a commonplace that we live very much on the surface of our mind in relation to the surface of events. This is a very weak situation. Now, we all, it's also commonplace that there's a great depth in every human mind. Mm -hmm. All this transcendental meditation is, is a simple technique of coming to the deepest aspect of that, having established oneself in that state to come out and act, like pulling a arrow back on a bow. If you don't know about shooting an arrow, you say, what on earth are you pulling it back for? But this is the whole technique of shooting the arrow. Yes, but then you see, there is in this belief a, a kind of faith in a transcendental will in the universe, oh. which I don't happen to that share. No but I think you can waste a tremendous all. lot of time trying to get in a state of bliss in communion with that. Well, one is talking just let me just, just take this is, is there, yeah. There's no faith yes. at all, John no. Allison. No. This is a perceptual method. It's absolutely unconcerned with well, conceptual apparatus. I don't think the Maharishi made it that clear to us, really. Well, you call it experience. Is this just the word you're looking for? It's experience. It's yes. experience. But do you find... Uh, <clears throat> John and George, that your beliefs have altered as a result of meditation? No, they've been strengthened. But I've always believed this for the last couple of years, but through the meditation it's just strengthened it. You see, all these doctrines and beliefs that have been laid down by great prophets, they've been put down there because these people have actually experienced it. And by their experience with some form of truth, they've tried to put it out for all the rest of the people to take up. But his argument is just based on no experience at all. You said just now that you're a Hindu, you're a Buddhist, you're a Christian, you're all of these. Yes. Uh, people think of those things normally as different. Yes. What is it, in what way is it that they're all the same? Well, because it's teaching the people through various forms how to approach God, and God being the, the one and only creator. But is experience different... driving our friends into some kind of community? This is what's bothering us a yes. bit. Is this something you must do on your own, or does it lead you into uh, community action? Well, now, you I must wonder... do it on your own to attain your own uh, bliss state. Naturally, it's something that Jesus said, something about go and fix your own house first. And that's what you've got to do. Everybody goes and fixes themselves up. And when they're all straight, then they're all able to act together, because we're all one anyway whether you like it or not. And there, I'm afraid, we have to take a break. Mm -hmm. We'll be back yeah, in a trice. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, we've got about three more things to do in the second half tonight, but... Uh, it's quite clear, talking to the audience and so on, during the break, that uh, 
there's a lot more to be said on this subject, so uh, we'll scrap the rest and we'll carry on with this. Um, do you think it's fair what's been said so far by John Mortimer and so on, suggesting that meditation is selfish? I don't see how it's selfish. If uh, we've no need to be here, you know, I mean, we don't sort of dig doing TV for the fun of it. We're here just because we want, you know, we believe in meditation. And so we that's believe not very we can, we can sort of maybe help a few other people to understand that it's, you know, that it's easy. Well, we've not got no need to be here either, really. And, uh, well, well, let's, not, let's all be yeah, not yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're not claiming your selfishness. And, and I would like to understand, I think that perhaps we should try and get it a little clearer. Uh, what we're talking about, if we're talking about a mystical religious belief, which I think that George Harrison is, because he talked about the divine laws that make it's the sun get up It's not mystical, you know, mysticism. Well, let me just finish yes. this. Then that's one thing which I would dispute, but I would like to to ask John Ellis Anderson whether really this has got anything to do with a belief in God at all. Because if all we're talking about is a technique of self-examination which you can perform over shaving in the morning and then go out and help mankind more as a result of having done it, then nobody in their senses would dispute that it was a very excellent thing to do. But are we talking about that or are we talking about a universe which has some hidden laws and a hidden creator who manifests himself only to people like Mr. Harrison and the Maharishi when they get into a state of trance. That's what I want to know. Well, let's face it, these laws that you say, hidden laws, they are hidden, but they're only hidden by our own ignorance. And the word mysticism is just being arrived at through people's ignorance. There's nothing mystical about it, only that you're ignorant of what that entails. Well, everybody with any religious belief has always thought that everybody else was ignorant about its mystical value. But are we really talking about mysticism, or are we talking about a technique of improving yourself, which is totally scientific and you rational? You can take it either way. You can take it either way. Well, that be... This is because it is a perceptual method. If a man has got a great conceptual apparatus and he meditates, he will begin to understand the nature of the conceptual apparatus, and if he's wrong about it, he will begin to understand where he's wrong about it. If he's got no conceptual apparatus, he simply perceives an abstract experience. Huh? Now, when he's had an abstract experience, he may wish then to give himself explanations of it. But it's a primarily a perceptual method. And how, for everybody, do you define the word perceptual then? Experience, rather than thinking about something. Not an idea, not an attitude, not a belief, an experience. It's the difference conceptual is a biological textbook. Going for a walk in the country is an experience. They refer to each other, but they're in different situations. In and so what this offers why is an experience. This, yes, yeah. yes. But why should this abstract experience be any more valuable than any other experience? You see, George Harrison talked about a bliss experience. Well, you can have a bliss experience by drinking a bottle of whiskey. No. Now, you get a hang of it. Why, why is, a, why yeah, is his bliss experience... It's a hell of a non-bliss experience next bliss morning. His abstract bliss experience, experience in any way more valuable <laughs> than anybody else's <laughs> bliss experience? You are uh, notoriously a sort of anti-God man. Not but really, if you tell me that the against. God you don't, that you don't believe in, I'm sure well, we'd all say we didn't believe in him either. But one isn't talking about belief, one is talking about experience. And this experience is an inner experience. And having had this experience, or having this experience, you then have to describe it. And certainly there is a language to describe it. But it's something that can be talked about. It's something that is actual, that happens as much as the historical. Yes, but look, but I mean, the thing is that, what is the difference then? I mean, what, what is the difference between the experience, the two things that John has just said? What is the difference between a bliss experience through meditation and assuming it's possible, a bliss experience, <laughs> experience through drinking, as I sound as I'm doing at the moment, um, a <laughs> bottle of whiskey? Because the bottle of whiskey one is relative. It's could be relative bliss, depending on how intoxicated you got. <laughs> Whereas the meditation, you go beyond this ordinary experience that's on the relative level of experience. It's beyond that. And this is why you, you can't tell the people about it, really. <laughs> it's something that if they did it themselves, then they'd know because they'd actually experience the thing. But you can't talk about an abstract experience. You can't really put it into words. But you see, that's what Dr. Yeah, yeah. Ellison has talked about. He said it's an abstract mm. experience. Well, that sounds to be a very blurred conception and as uninteresting, really, as abstract art. 
Why isn't it better to have an experience which is related to the actual world we live in? Why not try? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this is the point. Could I make this point, John? I mean, the thing is that in the last resort, people can talk about meditation until they're pie-eyed, actual, as if you're a public meeting on television. And in fact, we won't convince you or anybody else at all. It's just simply something you have got to try. I cannot tell you what a strawberry tastes like. In the last resort, if you want to know what a strawberry is like, eat it. Yes. You may like it at the end of it, or you may not. But it doesn't now, give the, the point, strawberry some translucent, no, mystical... No, look, <laughs> let's... <laughs> well, speak yourself, I adore yeah, yeah. strawberries. I mean, phrase they're one of the most delicious things in the world. But, I mean, don't let's get on to a side trip. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, not, not, let's get on to your is restaurant. He's <laughs> not. No, but the, the point is this. The point is this, John, if I just finish, is the reason that all of us who practice meditation feel it's so important for people to know about it is because you do come to a state where you can find total serenity, total peace. And this is desperately what the world is in. There are many, many ways of achieving total oh, serenity. How do you do it? The only one, go, for goodness sake. I never have had it. Well, why Which, do you and try I don't, then? So I don't honestly know whether it's something that I'm particularly interested in. You can achieve total serenity by going mad. You can achieve marvellous serenity by going to sleep. What is, one has got to decide is whether you're, the serenity which you're seeking, seeking is A, of practical value to the world, and B, particularly enjoyable to yourself. Can you I, say it's enjoyable, but we don't I, know. No, we don't, well, don't worry about whether I personally enjoy it. It's totally irrelevant. Do you believe there is such a thing as evil and sin in the world? Nasty. Well, I, I, that's a question which I don't want to cope with on the moment. Something unpleasant. <laughs> I certainly believe there are very many unpleasant things in the world, right. yes. Now, I believe it is true to say that all sin is fear motivated. I believe fear is the central enemy of mankind, whether it's neuroticism, whether it's actual active, aggressive evil, doesn't matter what it is. Fear, fear, fear. This is our heritage. I think for original sin, you can read original fear. Now, paradoxically, society for countless generations have been trying to fight fear with more fear. Fear of hellfire and damnation, fear of what society will say, what people will say, fear of the, hell, of, of, of the cat, fear of the gallows, fear of prison, fear of this, fear of that, piling fear upon fear upon fear. It's not surprising that, in fact, society is in a ghastly, terrible state. Now, where the Bible says, perfect love casteth out fear, and this is just what we're talking about. Yeah. Derive at a state of peace, of serenity, of joy inside yourself. You are no longer afraid, therefore you're able to give out love to other people. Nobody's going to argue that it's a good, not a good thing to cast out fear. Nobody's going to try and pretend it's not a good thing to love people and have goodwill as much as possible. The only thing that I'm venturing to question is whether the pursuit of your own serenity is the best path towards achieving all these excellent... Well, results. if you're happy, you're more likely to make other people happy. That's all it is, you know. Not necessarily. But but why? I could imagine a very happy husband giving his family absolute hell. In well, he's not really happy, no, then. No, you know, I'm talking about true happiness. Ah, well, no, no, no. That's very well, easy. How, how, how would you well, as opposed to happiness. happiness from a bottle of whiskey and happiness from going in there. Uh, isn't that the same again? a difference of words? A bottle of whiskey, I would say, gives us pleasure, gives us something transient, if I drink it, somebody else cannot drink it. But an experience of joy, even the experience of a poem or of a music, of contemplation of nature, we all can have it. And therefore, that higher experience, we call it joy, is the joy, and this joy grows higher and higher until we can find a joy in the very center of our souls, the joy of being and the joy of love. If for a moment we all have this feeling of love now, here, universal love, the millions or thousands of people who hear us would feel it. Yes, but what they is a feeling? feeling now. What yeah. is a feeling? feeling? Right. And they will be yeah. one this with us. It, you see, it's, one all, with them. it's vibrations that people give off. I mean, if somebody's happy, then <coughs> he gives off a good vibration, as opposed to uh, being annoyed, he'll give off a bad vibration. It's something like that. If you get a lot of people like... When we first went to Bangor, we met all these meditators. And it's so obvious just by seeing the people because they give off this peace and happiness. And, and that's the thing, the more happy. people who do it, the more the vibration yeah. and, and that's the influence for everybody else. The bigger the vibration, the more people receive it and the more the other people will believe it. You see, there were a lot of Christian saints who spent their time mewed up in convents, carefully cultivating their inner sincerity and grooming the perfection of their own souls. And there were other saints, I suppose, who went out into the world and tried to improve a lot of other people. And I think you simply have to choose which you admire the most.
But sometimes this is a cake and eat it scene, John. This is literally a cake and eat yeah, it scene. Yeah, yeah. But I agree with you that there have been techniques, and there probably still are techniques, of people withdrawing totally from the world and living in a cave or sitting on the top of a pillar and doing absolutely nothing at all, apparently doing nothing at all. Maybe they feel wonderful, and then uh, quite validly you say, what good do they do? Now, all Mahashi has come to do in the West is to teach every single one of us. What... Look out, Charlie. Uh, look out, yeah. Ah, the end of the world. Yes. That's yes. <laughs> it's right. <ridiculous. laughs> <laughs> no, it's someone who's this just drunk a bottle of whiskey. Sure, cosmic, <laughs> this is cosmic consciousness at work, obviously. Um, <laughs> No, what was I saying? Um, <laughs> you're not expected to remember. No, you're not expected to remember. <laughs> no, this whole point is that it is a technique whereby somebody, whatever you're doing, or maybe frightfully busy, you just meditate for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, half an hour, twice a day, and you come back slap bang on with very much more energy to get on and do things. But this there is, is an increase of energy. This is something new. Is this, yes. Are you claiming this is no, something new? No, no, no. It's, it's the ancient, thing, right? the olden it's, times. That yes. you, are exp you are expressing in a new way something that has been with us mm. all the time. Yes, yeah. yes and it'll always be here. Hmm? But it has to be rediscovered from time to time. Yes. Because so our right. society, as it goes on, overlays it with materialistic mm. concerns. We build a nice structure for ourselves. We're getting at the money. Yeah. We're building ourselves a nice career. And we're kicking other people in the teeth while we're doing it. Mm. And then you go to rediscover I mean, I think the a truth the thing to that, yourself. The thing that people were concerned about after Friday's thing was that, that this meditation, um, while it may do something for the individual, was not also concerned with the other 50% stopping us or other people kicking each other in the teeth. Uh, now, today it's clear that the way um, John Allison, George and John see this thing, it equally then reacts on the way you live and the way you behave and the way you care about other people. But I don't think it is the meditation uh, that does that, is it? Yes. It's that we're rather fortunate See, to have three exponents here who do care. You could be an exponent and not give a damn, couldn't you? No. No. What you've just no. said no. is that... Uh, no. You no, can't find your way towards... It's not a matter at all. You see, one thing that hasn't been said, that state of pure consciousness, which what attention is led to in meditation, is the same in everybody. Come to that state, this is union with the whole creation. Having established that in the mind, you come out and act. Little by little, as you go on, year after year meditating, more and more and more of that comes out. So in the midst of your dynamic, frenzied activity, that is not overshadowed, and that becomes automatically expressed by your actions. Then you're back on a mystic faith in a universal Ooh, consciousness. Right, one last question. Because mystic, this, mystic this, all the, the time. Mystic, you know, there's nothing <laughs> mystic about mystic. You know, it's just a word <laughs> that people have invented all right, for, because mysterious. they don't understand it. But, all right then, John, what is then the difference, would you say, between John Lennon before meditation and John Lennon after a few weeks of meditation? Well, before I wouldn't have been here, I've got more energy and more happiness. I don't know about intelligence. <laughs> I'm just happier. You know, I'm just a better person. And I wasn't bad before. I'll second that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, George. Thank you. And that, there, with personal testimony, is where we must leave it. Until tomorrow night, good night.